Hello and welcome to this brand new series. We're calling it Heritage, Heritage Contractors. And basically we're only going to be using old style vintage type equipment. The idea is that we're going to be establishing a vintage farming implement museum. We do start with quite a bit of equipment. Uh, to get us going. It's all vintage. Got a nice old trailer. It probably takes just under 4,000 litres. Wooden trailer. And if we go out the back here, that leads us into our backyard of our little operation. All we own is the equipment and two buildings, the farm buildings that we are in now. It's a nice little planter. As you can see, all the equipment is rather used. But we are a working museum. Got a nice old bison, or bison harvester well used and this is a baling trailer a cultivator with a couple of tires on the top our headers so as you can see we everything is pretty small but of course this this map is small, compact and beautifully formed. We will get to know the map as we go around and enjoy it. Our main tractor is a 80 horse horsepower Case Farmall 560. It is in working order. It probably needs a bit of a service. There we go. So 80 horsepower Got, got a bit of pulling power, 16 miles an hour, so it can get around a little bit, but it's not uh, the speediest, but well, then again, none of the vintage equipment is speedy. And a couple of attachments for carrying pallets and bales. As we go out the front door, if we go out these gates here, we'll go to our second building, which is just up the, up the drag here. Yeah? We've got a little place for repairing our equipment and got some barrels for our fuel. Just pop in some there. We don't have a huge amount of money, but we'll put uh, 500 litres worth of diesel in there just so that we can uh, have fuel available when we need to top up got a small baler so we can only do small bales at this point in time and then we've got the massive Ferguson 47 horsepower if I remember correctly it's gonna have a look at its stats there we go 47 horsepower twenty one miles an hour so it can get around a little bit but um, yeah obviously it doesn't have a lot of well, there's a reasonable pulling power for a map at this size. A little bit more modern than our uh, farm wall, but... Um, just having a look again at the, at the baler. We've got our mower and our tedder. So the idea is that we're going to be doing contracts. So we need to buy a lot, lot more equipment. We need to buy more land as well to establish the museum on. And last of all, just our windrow. So let's head on back down to the farm. So yeah, so we're going to be doing contracts every month to start making money. Um, there are different uh, little farms around the area with different animals on. 
So the idea is to to get enough money to buy those um, those pieces, well, those pieces of land, and then add more equipment on there so that people can come around and visit different places in this beautiful town, this beautiful village, and get an idea for the way farming was done. So our main selling point is that we is that we sell our services, our our, our equipment to to different farmers. They can get people in, come and have a look at vintage equipment working on their farms if they want to. And they pay us for doing their job. And that's the way we make our money. So we do start off with a few chickens. This lovely little chicken pen on the side of the house. Chickens come in there, they do their laying there, we collect the eggs from there. Fabulous, fabulous. This is a really, really good map. And I don't think I've told you who, what the map is. The map is Kellerbach. And I'll go through all the details of the modder, which is Kelle. So we've got 10 chickens and a rooster, and that should get us going. We're not playing with precision farming or anything along those lines at this point in time. Right, so the first thing we need to do is put a little bit of feed into the chickens. Before we even think about going to contract, we've got to, f to go and do contracts. Now we do have a, a bale storage area on the farm. You can take 250 bales and in there are a couple of bits and pieces. And there's two pallets of seeds. Uh, not seeds, um, two pellets of wheat and we'll feed the wheat, we'll fe feed a pellet to the chickens just to make sure that they can start reproducing, we'll get some eggs. The other thing is to create um, some sort of little farmer's market. Uh, it can be a bit more modern of course than, than this. Um, we're not pretending that we are in um, in vintage times, we are actually in modern times, but we're establishing a vintage museum. So we can sell in modern farmers markets and to modern uh, uh, productions and such like. Just get this hooked up. There we go. So we don't have the capability of putting a front end loader on this one. We, may, we might on the, um, on the Massey Ferguson, but we'll um, We'll find it a bit later, but this is this works just as well. We're just going to pick up this pellet of seed, and we only have to take it across the across the courtyard to um, to fill up the the chickens. So we'll be having a look at each each piece of equipment in action as we go through the series. We'll be doing lots of different crops. Of course, as the seasons change, um, it may be a lot of the same sort of contracting done. But we'll try and show a lot of the work that we do. We'll, we'll try and show just about all of the work that we do. Some of it might be a, on a bit of a time lapse, but uh, that's just the way it goes. I love the look of this, and doesn't it sound great as well? And we can just drop it off here. Fabulous. It should, it should go quite. It should be around about here somewhere. There we go. That's dispersing. That's job number one done. Chicken's got a thousand liters in there. There's only ten of them, so I don't think we need to put any more in. We've still got another pallet of food, so we will also have to buy food for the chickens, and as we go around. We'll be buying our farms which mainly have different types of animals on them and we will uh, then be buying in more vintage equipment and displaying them and using them when when necessary from the different farms. 
I think the first one we should try and go for is probably the sheep farm, cost about 68,000 euros um, and we will uh, we'll work towards it. It's going to take a little while, contracts are not huge on this farm, because uh, uh, on this map, uh, because the fields are pretty small. So let's go and have a look at our first. So we've got two ploughing contracts, field 9 and 8. Fertilising, so fertilising only brings in 1400 but you'll have to buy your pellet of fertiliser although there may be fertiliser in the store storeroom um, it doesn't look very luc lucrative fertilising on here we will try one somewhere along the line but we'll start off with doing a bit of ploughing so we'll go on to field number nine and get the ploughing done field number nine just up the drag from us not too far away from us towards the production area so we'll get the farm all out and um, we're going to pick up our plow and off we go just reverse through we can see it there in the background hook up we'll try and do at least two contracts today we are sort of in the afternoon already. Was hoping there would be a bit of grass uh, to be harvested, but it uh, doesn't look like the con contract gods have given us that at this point in time. <laughs> uh, okay, lovely, lovely map. This beautifully detailed. I think we go left here. It's just ideal for this type of equipment. It's very tight to map, you'll see as we go along. Um, it is definitely not made for any equipment that is of any real size. I suppose sometimes you could get away with medium size equipment, but pretty much it's small size equipment. And having said that, the fields are in proportion to that so the whole map is in proportion to using small equipment and that's why I chose this map it's because with the vintage equipment and low speeds I didn't want to be able to have to travel I spend a lot of time traveling we will be doing a bit of traveling because of the low speed but the map is pretty small I'm sure as you've uh, seen the PDAs when I've had them up it just takes a small small space on the on the of the available area that maps can be made in so yeah we'll do a couple of headlands the other idea is that we will um, be asking for for volunteers to help us as we go along as we get more equipment so in conjunction with the with the town council that we have here, um, they have given us a grant to employ local people to help out at the heritage farm on a um, it's a it's a voluntary basis, but they will get a small small payment, and we will make those payments directly to the people when they do help us and every month we will be reimbursed for what we pay for for the volunteer workers so they're not essentially volunteer but it's a way of retraining um, it's a way of the local council giving back to the people of the village but to start off with we must probably doing a lot of the work ourselves but we will try, certainly from the second episode onwards, we will try and get local people helping. And we do have two, well, we've got basically got three three different um, types of machinery. So we've got the two tractors and the harvester. And as we get harvesting contracts as well, we will we will make use of, um, of the workers, of the village folk. I think it's a brilliant idea with the councils that it, um, instead of just handing out 
funds to people is to give them some sort of work and then reimburse people that are supplying work to work for them. Very, very good idea. And of course we, we will take advantage of it. Um, the council that be are very are very much um, well are, are very excited about me establishing this this sort of vintage museum across the whole town because it will bring in lots of tourist revenue um, as we said there will be the opportunity for um, people to um, to build or to um, get jobs in the in the different production places as they open up um, and we can start supplying crop to them so yeah it'll all it'll all be for benefit of, benefit of the town and our museum of course so all the funds will be spent either in buying uh, more property to display and we will be spending any income that we have on buying new vintage equipment to display around the little farms that we buy so that's the the series in a nutshell First of all, we need to buy, I think there's four different farm fields, uh, for two, four different farms, one for pigs, sheep, cows, and there's other horses, yeah, horses as well. And as we buy, as we buy them, we'll buy them up um, as we make enough money to buy them. And then we will also buy up um, any vintage machinery that we can lay our hands on and that we have enough money to buy because we don't want to just... Hopefully, hopefully we might get some donations, but I doubt it. We, do, we can't count on that. So this farm we're pulling very well on this... I mean, this is not exactly flat land. I don't seem to be losing too much speed on the uphills. We'll just do a couple of headlands and then we'll... I was going to say we'll put it onto a worker, but we'll, we'll put it onto a time-lapse. Oh, it's castle in the background. You can just catch it at the top of the center top of the sc uh, screen, creating a bit of depth. Fantastic. This map is really, really good. It is, um, as I said, pretty small, but essentially very very detailed very picturesque very I would I want to say Bavarian but I'm not sure if that's right but yeah very very European and although well it it doesn't say uber modern and I think that fits in with this vintage series but it doesn't look like the buildings are, are are very very old in any event, you know. Just trying to get ourselves uh, on the 90 degrees here. We'll just put it on to see if we can uh, travel up here and have a look around. Let's get a couple of different shots of the 
Farm well as it's working. Here we go. Looking good. Works beautifully. Of course, not a huge working width be uh, behind us on the tractor. But reasonable. I mean, each contract is going to take a bit of a, a bit of time. It's probably only going to do maybe three, four, as we get some workers going, four contracts on a, in a month. But that's pretty much what you would get on this size map and the number of fields that we have. It's enough to keep us interested, enough to keep us going. 41% already completed. <laughs> Fantastic. What else uh, can I tell you about um, how we're going to play this map? So workers are going to be allowed. Um, we are not playing with precision farming. Um, we are not going to be buying up our own fields. So any any feed that we going to be needing for any of the animals we're going to have to buy in so we're going to have to generate income for that as well any product of course that we can that we can make from the from the different animals that we eventually get um, we can sell wherever we want to but the idea is to create some sort of some sort of farm shop or farm buying area maybe across the different farms for people to come in and buy directly from from us so that we can um, generate that income as well and also make up a um, a um, A bit of new work is what I'm trying to think of. A bit, a bit of extra employment for the for the folk of the town. Still trying to keep us. We don't have GPS on these machines, of course. So. To make sure that I'm nicely aligned. It doesn't always work though, as, all, as you will see. <laughs> oh, I love these old, I love these old pieces of equipment. I love the new equipment as well. But just look how solidly that's made. And that whole chassis, chassis and engine look like one. Tires are fairly narrow. See what did I tell you? Busy messing around, taking pictures from different angles, and then I miss <laughs> a slither of of plowing. We'll get that all sorted out. Fantastic. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And of course with uh, with FS25 coming along, it's still a little way down the line, still a couple of months. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be starting a new series. Um, I don't see any reason why we should stop playing FS22 for now, maybe even overlap a little bit as we wait for new mods to come in when the FS25 starts. I will be doing a little, a little um, feature on FS25. There's a lot of people that are doing a lot of information on FS25. Um, 
I will I've been watching a lot of it and I will make a well I'll I'll do a, a, a short little episode or a short little video just on my thoughts in the near future well here we go we'll put this onto a time lapse and we'll catch you once it's done Well, you're back with me, and we just about finished. Get this back onto normal speed, and we'll just finish off these probably another two passes and get that done. So, it hasn't taken us a huge amount of time. Um, as you can see at the top there, it does say contract on fuel 9 is finished, but as a matter of principle, we will finish the contracts even though we could. We could technically just stop doing this. We are going to finish off each and every contract. Make sure that the job is done properly. Otherwise, of course, we will not be employed again or we'd not be given another contract. Just this pass to do and I think there's a little bit back at the top. Now, we're still just after four o'clock in the afternoon. We are playing at two times speed, might change that as we go along. Um, might speed it up or slow it down just depending on how the vintage machinery is working. But it's really not about the time span, it's more about the using the vintage equipment and getting the job done. So I think yeah, I think we'll go and see if there's any other contracts still available. I know there was, we're on field 9 now, there was a contract on field 8 which is right next door here, so we, if that's still available we'll get that done. It's another plowing contract. Yeah, field 8. Joel Mochenberg. Joel Mochenge. Mogenge. Not quite sure. Yeah, Sandra, I'm not sure I want to do your contract. I, I just don't know if I can make any money out of it. And I know I've got some fertilizer in stock, but yeah, 1400, I don't think uh, it's enough to do that. We'll see as we go along. We'll try one out. Maybe there'll be enough fertilizer left over to make it to warrant us. But then again, we don't have any fuels to utilize the fertilizer. Or maybe we'll have enough fertilizer to to do a couple of fertilizing contracts. We'll see. We'll work it out. We won't discount it completely. I'm not sure that I've got a fertilizer spreader. Do we? I don't think so. So we'll have to 
be able to make enough money to buy a fertilizer spreader first of all. So they put that down on the list of vintage equipment to keep our eyes open for. Yeah, slightly smaller field. Love the fact that these fields are not uh, that are, are undulating as well. And we'll get this done on a bit of a time lapse. Just get the, uh, the headlands done first. Beautiful. I love the way this machine looks. Right, we'll see you once it's done. Right, we're just about done. I thought we would just switch over to a first person view. Give you a look of the tractor in the first person, just a quick glimpse there. So another two passes I think and we'll be done. So this has taken us, so we're getting up to sort of five o'clock in the afternoon. The machine has not skipped a beat, worked perfectly, it does probably need a bit of service when we get back. But we'll get it sorted out, not too much of a problem. Stones are switched on in the, at the moment. Um, yeah, normally I must admit it's one of my, my things I don't like doing is collecting stones <laughs> so I normally switch it off when I'm working on lands and what have you but uh, we'll leave it on for now it did occur to me when I was playing up I uh, thought to myself oh I've left stones on I have done, done it a couple of at the beginning of one or two of my series, I think Alma I did stones at the beginning just to um, show people that, it, that I do occasionally do them but yeah I'd, my feeling is that once you've ploughed up a field you'll plough stones the first time around but you shouldn't get a lot of more stones after that stand under correction but uh, certainly been my experience, experience in the limited fields that I've ploughed or been involved in the ploughing. So we're just about done. Once it's just done we'll head on back down to the back on down to the farm and park everything away 
The one drawback about the vintage equipment is that the lights on them are not very good. Although we're still in daylight here, yeah, when we've got into the shadows we've switched the lights on and uh, yeah. It's not like some of the modern equipment where you've got lights all around the machine. Pretty much got a light in the front and a light at the back. <laughs> and that's it. But then once again we, we're working on much much smaller fields. If you go left there you go up to a lot of the production units and a lot of the, um, well not a lot of the, um, the map shop, the equipment store. Although we've got our own workshop on the farm, there's also a workshop up there. Let's go down a little cobble track. All these little attention to detail. And for some reason I couldn't get that normally is a tap that can um, that has a vehicle washing was the ability to wash vehicles so basically it's quite a it's got the same as the kircher type um, scripts in it um, but for some reason it doesn't work so we'll have to have another most of our equipment is is dirty we're not too stressed about that we want it to be look like it's been used for museum purposes rather than in pristine condition so we're not going to repaint the vehicles or anything along those lines right time to get the money in so we still got the fertilizing contract as I've mentioned we're going to have to look at that in a little bit more depth to see whether we actually can make money at the sort of uh, rewards offered we'll see right so let's collect it we've used all our own equipment that's a nice bit of income so of course because the fields are small we're not going to be making a huge amount of income there we go so we're just under 10 grand let's get everything closed up and that's where we're going to end this first episode do hope you've enjoyed this episode of heritage contracting if you have please like and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one Cheerio!